This episode is brought to you by Cox Home Life. Cox helps make your home smarter. And now you can pull up your Home Life cameras on your TV with your Contour voice remote and some simple voice commands. To learn more, visit cox.com slash this is home. This podcast is coming to you on MPN, the marketing podcast network. There's another show on MPN you might like as well. I'm Nick Westergaard, host of the On Brand Podcast. Each week I interview marketing thought leaders or those working for innovative brands like Adobe, Ben & Jerry's, HBO, Salesforce, and Whole Foods. You'll learn how to tell stronger stories and build better brands. Just visit onbrandpodcast.com or search for On Brand with Nick Westergaard wherever you like to listen. This is the Marketing Podcast Network. Want Instagrammers and YouTubers to mention your brand? Or do you want to influence an audience to buy your product? I'm Jason Falls, author of the book, Winfluence, Reframing Influencer Marketing to Ignite Your Brand. In this podcast, we explore the people, companies, campaigns, and stories that illustrate the difference between using influencers and actually influencing. Welcome to Winfluence, the Influence Marketing Podcast. Hello again, friends. Thanks for listening to Winfluence, the Influence Marketing Podcast. About three or four years ago, my daughter Katie came home with a gallon jug of borax and another of Elmer's glue and announced she was going to make slime. As you can imagine, I was more than thrilled to have a 10-year-old playing with chemicals and food coloring all over my house. But she and a couple of her friends had fallen into the slime craze and wanted to make some. A similar thing happened to Angelina Lee, maybe a year or two earlier than that. She was 14 years old at the time. She started making slime and posting pictures and recipes on social media channels and became quite popular as a slime influencer. So she started making slime recipes, packaging them and selling them on Etsy. Then she migrated over to her own website and Shopify account. Late last year, she sold her 15,000th order of slime. And all this was happening while she was in high school in her first year of college. Angelina Lee is the influencer and entrepreneur behind Firefly Slime. She is a mega influencer in the space, has done brand partnerships and all the things that go along with being an influencer. But she also walked that interesting entrepreneurial balance of also selling products and driving revenue for her own brand. She has been so successful doing it, her parents finally let go of the obsession with telling her to be a doctor or lawyer. Angelina and I caught up recently to chat so we could learn more about her balancing act of being an online business owner and an influencer all around slime. Real quick before we get to that, let's chat a second about Tagger, the complete influencer marketing software that happens to be the presenting sponsor of this show. We've been talking to Pete Kennedy, Tagger's founder and president, about Signals. That's the platform's new listening feature that allows you to monitor and leverage what influencers are saying about your brand, competitors, or industry. You know, it doesn't promise that it's it's a, a whole new product and a, a whole, you know, second series of things that you're going to be able to do with Tagger. It's we've added listening within the relevant context of what we do which makes the influencer marketing software as a whole much stronger, I think. No, that, that's exactly right. I mean, it's, it's so interesting. There's so many nuances with influencer marketing. Certain categories work for your industries, right? Um, cer certain topics are important. Uh, competitor strategies in market, you need to understand what those are in a really concise way so that you can conquest your competitors or at least use their best proven strategies in order to implement those strategies within your uh, your influence and marketing strategies. So uh, that's really what Signals is all about, the strategy tool, and it, it gives the power of all marketers to become strategists, whereas they might pay a group or an agency ton of money in order to create that strategy, Signals will do that for you automatically. Thanks to Pete and to Tagger for the great product and for helping bring this podcast to you each week. I want you to learn more about Tagger and get a demo to see if Tagger is right for you, even if you just want to check out the new Signals feature. But in order to do that, you need to visit a URL. It's jason.online slash Tagger. That's jason.online slash Tagger. Go there, get a demo and see Tagger for yourself. The 14-year-old who started a business selling slime, mostly through her online presence as an influencer. Firefly Slime's Angelina Lee is next. 
on Winfluence. All right, Angelina, let's uh, let's check your ID here. You're still at the age where it's not offensive for someone to ask this. How old are you? I'm 19. <laughs> and how long have you been in business? Um, I've been in business for five years, so since I was 14. <laughs> oh, wow. And, and, and tell everybody what it is you sell. Um, so I own a slime business, <laughs> and it's um, pretty uncommon these days. I feel like um, I make slime um, for kids, for basically anyone of any age. Um, it's used for, you know, playtime. It's used for just being creative. Um, a lot of people use it for stress relief, anxiety relief, um, just as a calming method. Well, I have to say my daughter, Katie, who is 13 right now, went through a slime phase, I think a year and a half or two years ago. She started making slime every other day at my house. She kept containers of it in the kitchen even for a while. So this this product is a thing for some people. My daughter really enjoyed it. Now, before I get into more about the product, there's something else here that people need to know to give our conversation some context. Give us a rundown of all your social channels and how many followers you have. <laughs> yeah, so... Um, on Instagram, I have 375,000 followers. Um, on TikTok, I have 115,000. And on YouTube, I have 20,000. So any way you cut it, you've not only built a successful business, but have the audience to be considered a, you know, basically a mega influencer in some circles. <laughs> I, I, I'm guessing most of the people follow you because they love slime, right? Yeah. Um, I joined the slime craze Um I'd say I was one of the first um, slime accounts in the very beginning, which really helped to launch my account. Um, I post content of all the products I post and um, I follow up with all of the ASMR trends. So that definitely <laughs> helped. <laughs> yeah. I, I would think that, uh, you know, squishing the slime, you know, in that sort of therapeutic way is a good Good ASMR fodder there. Um, I wonder as your your influencer accounts or your uh, social media account follower accounts have grown, have you re- started to receive like offers from brands and whatnot to you know talk about their products on your channels? Yeah, definitely. I've done um, some collaborations with brands as well. Um, I've done some giveaways with brands such as Hello Pets, if that's something that you recognize. Mm-hmm. Um, I've done one with mini brands. I've done one with um, Elmer's products. Um, I do also reach out to influencers myself to do marketing, um, which I know is something that you talk about a lot. Um, I think it's more organic that way to see, um, you know, the influencers that you follow and that you trust open up packages and do fun unboxings and reviews rather than just paying some money for ads that you're going to skip over anyway. Yeah. So, well, I I mean, I think also too, though, the more, probably the more important aspect of your social following is how it's served and complemented your business. Mm -hmm. So tell me, tell me how you got started back becoming the slime queen. (laughs) Yeah. So, um, what I think makes my story pretty unique is I started this business as an accident. Um, most people who, you know, start off a business have a intent to do so. They want to make money. They want to be an entrepreneur. But this is when I didn't know what entrepreneur was. I didn't have a bank account, you know. So um, this started off as a hobby when I was 14 Um, I loved creating anything, you know, I was into crocheting, painting, just crafting and slime just happened to be one of my hobbies. Um, I saw people on Instagram, um, posting slime videos. So I was like, you know, I can do that too for fun. So I started to do that. And then, um, my account kind of quickly launched from there. Um, I was growing by like tens of thousands every week. I saw my followers jump up by the hundreds. Like every time I refreshed, um, people started asking me where to purchase the slime. And I was like, why would anyone want this? You know, I make this from (laughs) my house. So um, that's when I started to establish my own website. Um, I started off on Etsy at first, and then I integrated over to Shopify as things got bigger and I wanted more control over. Um, all aspects of business. Um, 
I started off on Instagram and then I did a little bit of YouTube and then I did TikTok. Um, I actually um, planned on being a medical major at first, which is what <laughs> my parents had wanted for me. And then I realized that I, you know, had something in entrepreneurship and through business. So I actually switched majors and now I'm studying business administration in college. Um, so kind of similar to the one, the episode that you did about, you know, don't tell your kids to not be influencers <laughs> online. That's kind of what happened to me. My parents didn't take it seriously and they didn't think it was going to go anywhere. And then they realized that, you know, slime was a big deal and there was slime conventions before COVID and they saw all my sales and like all these opportunities I was getting. They realized, oh, this is kind of a big deal. Maybe it's okay to not have a doctor as a daughter. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, you you told me that you had reached your goal of 15,000 online orders. Have you started to set new goals beyond that? What's your roadmap look like? Um, I haven't yet. I've been pretty busy with um, the previous restock I just had, but I will definitely you know, sit down and look at all the numbers and see what I can do there. Um, maybe um, I've been looking to do more on YouTube. I've kind of slowed down on that over the years because I've realized it kind of takes a lot longer than posting on other social medias. But um, I definitely want to work on growing my YouTube as well. So does does do you think slime for you ends one day and you move on to other things? Or is this really a long term thing you're, you're expecting? Um, so at first, I thought this was going to last, I'd say, like two years top. So I didn't really invest much into the business at the start. You know, five years later, um, it's still a thing. It's still growing and still changing. So I think this is definitely going to last me a lot longer than I thought. Um, I don't think I'll still be doing this when I'm 50. So that's definitely why I'm going to college. I'm going to get the experience I need and see what I can do with this to grow this maybe into another business, maybe, um, I don't know, as long as I keep the doors open for what I can do. So you, I mean, you were at 14 when you started this and it started by accident, but you've been a full-time student this whole time. And of course you mentioned you're in college. How hard is it to juggle your regular life as, forgive me for saying it this way, but your regular life as a kid, uh, to run a business, how, how, how hard is that, that work life balance been? Um, I think it was a struggle at first. I didn't really know um, how to do that, but definitely, especially now, um, I definitely think I got it nailed down for sure. Um, I'm definitely a busy body. Like I love to always be doing things. So um, I do college full time. I do the business. I work a marketing internship. I'm a brand ambassador for different things. I I love like doing things. So um, I think I'm definitely good at managing my time and it helps that uh, my college classes now are online. So I don't have to physically attend class. Um, and with owning my own business instead of working for a boss, if I have finals that week, if I have exams, if I need to put aside time to study, I can do that and it won't impact my business because I can just delay things if I, if I need to. Right. So I think that definitely helped. Very nice. Where, where are you going to college? Um, I am planning to transfer to the University of Washington, their um, business school. So uh, Michael G. Foster. Very nice. So back in when you were, you know, sort of watching your social media following grow, you were selling things, let's say on Etsy, probably at the time. When did you, what was there a moment when you realized, holy crap, I'm onto something big here. This could be a real business. Um, I think it was when, um, I started getting invitations to different slime conventions. And that's something that people are always shocked to hear that exists. Um, slime conventions were really big before COVID happened. Um, I'd get invitations to ones like every um, every couple of weeks. And they would offer to pay for you know my flight and my hotel, basically my whole stay, plus a stipend to pay um, to sell at their uh, convention as well. And I would be invited to different ones throughout the country. And this is when, I think this is when my parents realized how big of a deal it was because I'd asked them to come with me. And of course I would pay for their plane ticket. <laughs> um, 
but it's okay. It's a business expense. So it's all right. But, um, they would come with me and then they would see all the other people doing the same thing I was. So they realized that, you know, I wasn't the only one doing this on the internet. There was other people and I had competition. And of course, Asian parents, they're like, Oh, this person's doing better than me. We need to step it up. (laughs) So this is when they realized it was a big deal. And, um, from there, um, it was always progressing for me if, as more opportunities arose. Um, so that definitely launched it, yeah. Nothing, nothing like a, a pair of obsessive parents to motivate yeah. you to succeed there. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously, I mean, you started out doing this on social media channels, posting things about slime, and then it became a business. How much of, of your business success do you think can be attributed to your social media followings? Is it is it all of it or is it just a part of it? I think um, the majority of it, for sure. I I pride myself in like um, if I don't put in the work, if I don't put in the effort to take time to make content, then it greatly impacts my sales. So um, I you know try to post very frequently. I do try to do a variety of videos of all of my different products, and I link the products to the website. So. Um, I try to hype up their restocks and make announcements for them and then gain all the traction myself and bring all the customers organically. So I think this, my social media definitely was a big impact. Yeah. Well, I mean, obviously this is the the kind of product and the kind of industry that I think is probably custom built and suited for the social media world. I don't know if, if slime would have been that popular without social media simply because it's, you know, people who are enthusiastic about a very niche product, um, you know, expressing that enthusiasm in creative ways, which is kind of what social media facilitates. So I wonder if you were to go back, I know you started this, this, this business of yours started as an accident. Um, if, if you could look back on that experience and, and ran into someone, maybe a 14 year old now who thought they wanted to start a business, what, what advice would you give to kids that might want to start one themselves? One thing I definitely regret not doing is keeping track of all my expenses early on. Um, I would love to know how much I made in the beginning. I just kind of put everything into one bank account, everything personal, everything business. So I had no idea how much I was making in the beginning. And then now I have, you know, an Excel sheet with every single category of expense and then every money, every like cent going in, every cent going out. So I know exactly how much I'm making. I keep track of all the hours I work. So I know all those numbers and I know that that's really important to me. Um, I get a lot of questions about like um, tips of people that want to start their own businesses. Mm -hmm. Um, I would definitely say to try to find something that makes you unique. Um, There's of course, tons of other people doing the same thing as you out there. And if you can find a way to stand out, maybe start a new trend, um, do something similar to someone else but in your own style if you're just copying someone else you're not going to stand out as um someone you know new so definitely find your own um find what makes you unique basically yeah so give us the lowdown on what makes yours unique um i think what definitely helped was as i said before I was one of the first big slime accounts that kind of grew in the beginning. So a lot of people that were first being introduced to slime found me um, in back in 2017. So um, I was part of, you know, the introduction of many new slime textures that people have never heard before. Um, I was one of the first a lot of trends. So being on top of trends definitely helped um, make sure, you have to establish, you know, what kind of theme you want all of your products to follow. And mine kind of goes towards like cute, you know, pastel colors and different shapes that you can mix into for sure. Very nice. Firefly Slime and it's fireflyslime.com. Uh, where else can people connect with you and Firefly Slime online if they would like to learn more? Um, it's Firefly Slime on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube, and fireflyslime.com if you're looking to purchase some slime. Awesome. Angelina, we'll let you get back to like studying for finals or whatever you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I should have stayed on my daughter about the slime thing, huh? 
Thanks to Angelina for sharing her entrepreneurial and influencer journey with us. You can find her online at fireflyslime.com. We'll also make sure all the links to her accounts on the social medias are in the show notes at jasonfalls.com. One last thing before we go, it's come to my attention that Winfluence needs more reviews on the various podcast apps. If you listen on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, Google Podcasts, or somewhere else, please take a moment, won't you, and drop some stars and a review. It helps more people find the show. And if you want to find some other great marketing pods to add to your queue, head over to marketingpodcasts.net. Winfluence is a flagship member of MPN. There's a whole roster of great shows there for you to feast on. Do you want to help make a future episode of Winfluence awesome? I know you do. Ask your question about influence or influence marketing that you may want my answer to or take on. Record a voice memo if you want to be heard on the show. I'll use it and send that via email. Or you can just send a regular email to jason at jasonfalls.com. I may use your comment on a future episode or your question to inspire a show topic. If I do, I'll send you a signed copy of Winfluence the book as a thank you. Winfluence, the Influence Marketing Podcast, is presented by my book, Winfluence, Reframing Influencer Marketing to Ignite Your Brand. Get your copy online at winfluencebook.com. While you're there, sign up for the latest ideas about influence marketing delivered in my monthly newsletter, or book me to speak to your company or organization about influence marketing. If you or someone you know is an influencer, a brand manager that uses influence marketing, or one of the many amazing people working in the influence marketing services world, and they would make a good guest for the show, email me at jason at jasonfalls.com. Our theme music is One More Look by the K-Club and Grammy Award-winning producer Jaquire King. Thanks for listening, and remember, when it's not about the person, but about results, it's Winfluence. Hi, I'm Sarah Panous, and if you work in the content marketing space, I invite you to subscribe to the Marketing with Empathy podcast. Join me and other industry experts as we share ideas to help you connect with your audience to drive better business results. I've spent the last 20 years driving content for billion-dollar brands. Now I help marketers build winning brand storytelling strategies to reduce feelings of overwhelm and confusion. Think of it as a content marketing jam session mixed with chicken soup for the soul. Subscribe to Marketing with Empathy today. This podcast is heard along the Marketing Podcast Network. For more great marketing podcasts, visit marketingpodcasts.net.